What's up, everybody? I'm Myron Metcalf with ESPN, joined by Jonathan Gavoni, covers the NBA draft for ESPN. Jeff Borzello covers college basketball and recruiting for ESPN. Jonathan and I are in sort of the belly of the Dollar Loan Center in Henderson, Nevada, where we've just spent a couple of days watching Victor Winbanyama from France, the projected number one pick in next summer's NBA draft. Everybody knew his first game in America would be wild. I don't think anyone could have anticipated what we've watched in these two games. Game one against Scoot Henderson's G League Ignite team, 37 points, goes 7 for 11 from the three-point line. That's a seven-foot-four human being going 7 for 11. Comes back Thursday. Unfortunately, Scoot gets hurt, takes some of the buzz away from the game. But Victor was like, don't worry about it, everybody. I got it. 36 points, 11 rebounds, four blocks, four assists. Guys, people like us say a lot. I've never seen anything like them. We are guilty of embellishing. But Jonathan, I'll start with you. It feels like when you say we've never seen anything like Victor, that we're all telling the truth. Yeah, honestly, most games of this nature do not live up to the hype. This one was way better than we could have thought it would be. He delivered in every way possible, creating his own shot, shooting off step backs, pulling up off the dribble, pushing off the defensive glass, blocking everything, dunking everything. Honestly, like there's no doubt in anybody's mind anymore. Not only is he going to be the number one pick in the draft, this guy has a chance to be a Hall of Famer. He's that good. Usually that's not my style to, you know, fawn over players, but we witnessed greatness today. And it's just, it's as simple as that. There, we're going to see an NBA that is going to be chasing Victor as hard as any prospect has ever been chased in terms of the trades that are about to happen, the tanking. Everybody wants to get a piece of Victor Wembanyama after to, what we saw these last to, to that To that point, like, so Tuesday night, uh, you know, the, when, when Scoot started out, started off the game tremendously well. I mean, you just look through Twitter, everyone's like, you know, Scoot's got a real shot at the number one pick. He's, he's, he's looked better through one quarter. And then as the game goes on, you know, you see fewer of those tweets fewer of those tweets. And then by the end of it, it's like, yeah, you know what? Victor is the clear cut number one pick. It was just, and, and Scoot was awesome. The first game, especially the first half of the first game at both ends of the floor, but it's just seven foot four, seven foot five guy that does what Victor does. There's just no comparison. And, and like Jonathan said, I mean, teams are, are going to be going nuts to try to get this number one pick. And the, the report that, that uh, Jonathan Awoj had the other day or yesterday about how this is going to be a race to the bottom like we've never seen. I'm fascinated to see how this unfolds. I mean, the bottom, I mean, what, the bottom 10 teams that, that don't really have a shot at winning a championship? Like, are they all going to be just trying to win 12 games all season? I, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be fascinating to watch that unfold. You, you can't blame anybody, too, for right? whatever they try to do to maneuver to put themselves in a position to, to go after Victor. I, they I mean, have a 14% chance to have drafting Victor. Yes. I mean, the interesting thing is, I talked to DeMarcus Cousins, who was one of the NBA guys here. Obviously, he's a free agent now. Chris Paul was there Tuesday's game. Devin Booker, Asia Wilson, Chelsea Gray. DeMarcus Cousins in his prime, you know, was, was a unique big, right? He was a guy who could do a lot of different things. You remember him in New Orleans before the injury? Like, DeMarcus Cousins was sort of viewed as a guy where you go, wow, this is sort of maybe the evolution in some ways. When I talked to him and he says, I've never seen anything like Victor, that to me is when it really means something special. And guys who played at the highest level, Jason Hart coaches the G League at night. So many like real basketball folks, all the NBA scouts and execs we've talked to this week. When they say it, Gavoni, that feels like something different that maybe we haven't heard since LeBron, maybe Zion a little bit, but it feels like this is the first kind of buzz at this level. They never seen anything like it. Maybe since LeBron James. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very clear cut what we saw these last two games. He is the number one pick in the draft. No questions asked. It's not just the skill set that he showed. It's not just the 7'4 uh, height and the 8-foot wingspan. It's the confidence. It's the toughness. It's the audacity to take some of the shots that he took today. Running in transition, pulling up off the dribble, falling out of bounds. Barely grazes the net. Steph Curry stuff, man. Has a man, you know, 28 feet from the basket, one-on-one -on -one iso, 
pull up in his face like it's nothing. We've never seen this before from a prospect. And, you know, and then you talk about the background, you know, some of the best part, honestly, of the last few days has been a chance to spend time with Victor, the people around him, his parents are here, um, his agents, his coaches. I mean, this guy really is, he ticks every box off the court, just in terms of the character, how driven he is. Um, you know, people are calling for him to shut it down right now. And say, what do you have to gain? You know, just wait, put yourself in bubble wrap until June and, and be the number one pick. And he's saying, no, you know, that's not what I'm about. For me, it's basketball first, everything else second. You know, he's talking about what would Kobe Bryant do? He said, if, if you went to Kobe Bryant and you said, shut down your season, he'd look at you like you're crazy. And that's exactly the type of competitor that Victor Wimbayama is. And that's what, another reason why NBA teams are so enamored with this guy. Jeff, yeah, I, think, I was going to say, like, the ceiling that, that we've talked about, it's, it's Hall of Famer. It's, it's one of the all-time greats. I think that the other thing is, like, his floor is incredibly high. I mean, like, let's say some of that stuff doesn't translate. Some of the stuff, you know, where, where he would take one dribble and just easily finish at the rim like he did today and a couple of ones. And, you know, maybe some of the fadeaways he gets pushed around a little bit because of his, his weight. Like, let's say some of that does not translate. He's still an elite jump shooter with range out to 30 feet like we saw today. He's still an elite shot blocker that covers ground incredibly fat, like incredibly well. Um, you know, so you're going to – like, worst case scenario, he's a seven foot four, high, high, high level 3 and D guy. Like, that's a floor that we've never seen. Yeah, that's something pass, that we've never seen. Like he can handle yeah. the ball. He, I mean, he does everything. Like, his he worst case scenario is still something we've he's never seen. He's a guy seen, that can and play that's crazy. the role. He can go get his own shot. He, you know, he's lethal in the mid post and yeah. the low post and the high post. I mean, this guy scores from everywhere on the floor. And that in the NBA game with the spacing that he's going to have, yeah. that stuff translates. You know, you talk about the floor. The only thing that we worry about is the body, you know, seven yeah. foot four, you know, guys that size. You know, there's been a history of injuries, you know. So I spent some time, you know, drilling down on that, talking to Victor, talking to his camp, saying, what is the plan here? You know, like what? And they told me for the last three years, this guy has seen every specialist in the world, the best ones for feet, for back, for everything, for knees, just to make sure, you know, what does his daily regimen look like from when he wakes up to when he goes to sleep? You know, we saw it the last few days, the amount of stretching that he's doing, the activation. There's a full time guy dedicated just to his body when he's on the bench taking care of them, you know, in the practice yesterday, 45 minutes, just, you know, working on his body, yeah. tweaking everything. He still has not lifted a weight in his life because he, he wants to fill out his frame naturally. He doesn't want to get too big. He doesn't want to lose that mobility, that fluidity. That's what makes him special. He's working, you know, in terms of um, learning how to land, you know, that's something that he works on, you know, when he, after he dunks, how does he come down after he blocks? How does he come down? He, they're really not leaving anything to chance there in terms of the amount of detail that they're putting in to making sure he has that longevity yeah. to have a 15 year NBA career. And, and I think on top of that, I mean, you mentioned it, uh, he's incredibly smart. Like when you, when you hear him talk about the game and you hear that maturity, I mean, this is a young man who understands exactly who he is, understands his potential, but also isn't getting ahead of himself. I mean, LeBron James, after the Lakers exhibition on Wednesday, Wednesday night, calls him a generational talent, you know, might be an alien. And I asked him today, what do you think about that? Now, like we've covered a lot of young players who would hear LeBron talked about me and their response would be, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is the greatest thing ever. And they would sort of feed into that. How could you not? That wasn't Victor. Victor essentially said, you know what? I heard it. It was cool. It's an honor. But I haven't done anything yet. I haven't been drafted yet. I have so many things that I still want to achieve before I deserve that kind of praise. And when you see that, with that spotlight and that scrutiny that this guy is facing and the maturity attached to that, Jeff, it tells me that the basketball stuff is great, but it's the other stuff that's going to make him this complete player and one day maybe a Hall of Fame. I mean, just, just the way that, that John laid out the never lifted a weight, hiring all these people and all these specialists, like this is clearly a well-defined plan for several years now. 
And like, clearly he has an end goal and he's nowhere near it yet. Like the number one pick clearly is not his number one goal or else he would shut it down. Like he has a lot more things that he wants to do than just be the number one pick. And then, you know, kind of coast for a few years in the NBA. It, it does seem like he wants to be one of the all-time greats. And that it, it just, from everything that I've heard, everything that John said, everything that obviously we saw the past two, two games or two games in three days, whatever it was. I mean, he just seems to have his head on his shoulders. He knows when to take over a game. He knows when to, you know, when he needs a rest, like it just, he, everything seems very kind of meticulous and planned out in a good way. You know, it's not, you know, being micromanaged by outside people. It's just, he has kind of definitive defined goals and, you know, he's nowhere near the end game of that yet. And being the number one pick is just a step on that journey to, you know, maybe being one of, you know, one of the all-time greats, the Hall of Famer, the, the best player in, or best prospect since LeBron. I was, uh, I was watching him walk, you know, these last couple of days. And maybe that sounds weird to say, but like seven footers, even the ones who are special, unique, yep. still have a bit of that sort of lanky look to That's them. Like, you, know? you compare them to like Chet Holmgren. Yeah, you see yeah. that even Chet has some of that. And Chet was fluid, it but it's just not the same level of fluidity. Yeah, you watch you watch Victor Walk, and it's like this is like a six four guard who suddenly yep. became seven four, and I think that feels like the difference. I talked to Sharif O'Neal, and I said, "Hey, did you ask did you ask your dad, Shaq, you know about Victor and how to guard him? He played against him today, and he said Shaq told him like I've never seen anything like that. You know, couldn't really help him. Like so, like Gamoni, what does this say about the evolution of the seven footer i know that there's one victor but is this the future bigger guys being able to do more things and how does that affect the game i just don't know how many human beings there are on the planet <laughs> who are you know that type of size there's only one guy length. but we're seeing more no. of and lebron you know, said he might be an alien so who knows i there's think the victor. way that he's been trained you know like he spent the entire summer in dallas with tim martin working out every single day at SMU, this is what they worked on. You know, they they they're looking at Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk Nowitzki's trainer, longtime coach, trained Victor for the last two years as well. So I mean, this is what they've been building towards. You know, they want he's a seven foot four center with the skill set of a guard who can play point guard, who can create his own shot, who can do everything, and thankfully for us, has the green light to really do that. You know, his coach, Vincent Collette, you know, I asked him yesterday in the press conference, I said, you know, most 18 year olds in Europe, the tendency is to, you know, make them pay their dues, to, to bring them along slowly, to put them in a box, every little mistake, you put them on the bench. You know, it's not, it's pretty rare to see a coach like Vincent Collette, let a 7'4", 18 year old experiment the way that he has, let him test the boundaries of his skill set and make mistakes. Do stupid stuff sometimes, you know, and not even flinch. And he said, you know, this season is about Victor. You know, that this is why he came to us. He's empowering us. And so it's my job as a head coach to empower him and to just let him continue to grow. And you saw the reactions today from Vincent Collette as Victor was making some of these ridiculous plays. He is laughing on the sidelines. He's smiling. He's talking to Rudy Gobert. He's talking to... Uh, you know, Victor's agents, he's having a ball because honestly, how much fun was it to see a guy like that just go off in that setting? It is so incredibly rare. You know, last year, Paolo against Chet. Paolo had a, that great first half, cramping in the second half. Chet, yeah. you know, really didn't show the best of his game. I can't really think of a matchup, you know, number one versus number two that really lived up to its billing. And Victor just exceeded that. You know, it was really just a showcase about the greatness of Victor Wembayama and just what a talent he is and how good he can become. He's 18 years old. Like we said, he has not lifted a weight yet. He could. And the, the, the one of those two matchups aren't usually with no. a one and two this good either. No, like, this, no, I mean, I, like Scoot's a special number two also. Yeah. It's like, that's, I think that's a huge part of the reason to live up to the hype is that these two guys are special, special players. And give and talk about because Scoot, you know, it's kind of unfortunate that he, is playing in a moment where the whole world's going, who is this seven foot four unicorn? Yeah. But Jeff, I saw Scoot up close and I said, wow, I texted you. His body's incredible. Yeah. He's got the longest arms you've ever seen for a 6'2, six, 6'3 six, guard, giant hands, explosiveness. There were a lot of moments where you said, if Victor's not on the court, the whole world's talking about Scoot Henderson. 
Yeah, I mean, the, 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 first, the first the first quarter or two of, of Tuesday's game, I mean, he, he looked like he was – he had a point to prove, saying, you know what, everyone's kind of penciling in Victor's number one pick, but, you know, watch me for, for a couple of games and then make a decision. And obviously he didn't play much today on, on Thursday due to the injury, but, you know, he was engaged at both ends of the floor. He was making plays in passing lanes. He was picking pockets. He was making plays in transition. Um, he's super confident with the ball in his hands. You know, he was finishing – with Victor at the rim, he was finishing up and under – um, you know, using his body well. And, you know, like Myron said, like he's, he's, his body is tremendous. I mean, he put on 20 pounds, I think. I looked it up at 20 pounds between a USA basketball thing and then the G League uh, weigh-in last year. I mean, 20 pounds of good weight. And that's kind of unusual for a high school kid to do that uh, in a two-year span. And, you know, I, I just think that his competitiveness, the way he shoots the ball, um, you know, he had a step back three over Victor on Tuesday. It's just the confidence he plays with and his ability to make shots and, and then, Again, it's that two-way ability. He, I mean, when he's locked in defensively, you know, there's there's not a lot of kids that have his hype and, and have this level of ability on the offensive end that are also engaged and will are willing to make plays defensively. So this could be a, a, a an hour-long video about Victor because he's that good, and, and we don't want to take up all that time. But I'm going to ask both guys the same question. I'll start with you, Jeff. I'll give you a million bucks. How much of it are you willing to bet that Victor is a Hall of Famer and lives up to every ounce of the hype right now? Million? Um, I'll say, God. Oof. Um, We're in Vegas, man. I know. <laughs> you know, so we got to ask. I'll put, it sounds low when I say like 400,000, but at the same time, I'm saying there's a 40% chance he makes the Hall of Fame, which is just an insane thing to say. Um, I guess I'll do that. I guess I'll say 400,000. I think there's a four, but the implied value of 40% chance of making the hall of fame. I've never said that about an 18 year old before. So I guess I'm going with it. That's, that's a ton of money. Givoni, same question for you, man. million dollars in your pocket. You're going down to going to the strip right now. How much money are you putting on Victor being a hall of fame? If he stays healthy, it's a hundred percent. There's no question yeah. about it. Honestly, well, you, like, you got a fact, you got to factor in. Some other stuff. Okay. But I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if he's going to stay healthy or not, but I feel like he has a good plan in place. Yeah. So I feel confident that Okay, he's not going to be an every – he's not going to play 82 games in a season, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, if he anybody. plays yeah. 65 to 70 games every year, Beautiful. hits his peak in the playoffs, he's 100% he's a Hall of Famer. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. I have never seen a prospect like Victor in my life. So I just, I, I just put 200,000 more on it. So now I'm up to 600,000. You're, you're up to 600. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make that accounting known. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brazil wants to keep about half a million for himself. I get that. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm going to bet it all too, man. I think it, it's all there and I think it's a great gamble and every team is going to be seeing what they can do to put themselves in a position to go after Victor Wimbanyama, one of the greatest prospects we've ever seen. Jonathan Gavoni covers the NBA draft for ESPN. Jeff Porzello covers college basketball. Myron Metcalf, also college basketball reporter. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.